Good morning. morning. Clap your hands. Shout for joy. Our Lord reigns on the earth and on the throne of glory. Let us open our hearts to the ascended Lord Jesus Christ who sits on the throne of glory. May the King of kings, the Lord of lords, shine in our hearts this day that we may feel God's glory and live into the hope to which God has called us. Let us worship God. Welcome to everybody who is here today. Glad to have you here in worship with us. Please take time to sign the friendship pad and greet your friends and neighbors in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many announcements in the bulletin about things happening in the life of our church and in the community. Uh, Today is a special day as we receive George Francis as a new member of our congregation, and we'll do that later in the worship service. Um, an announcement on the back about our Vacation Bible School, and please notice that it's for everybody. Uh, I'll be offering a class for adults in the evening when everybody else is gathered, and some information there about what we'll be doing. So I hope that you'll either come and participate or help as a volunteer for that exciting week. And also notice that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at Rockfish Presbyterian Church there'll be a service for Memorial Day. It is good to be with you today as we worship God. Um, If you'd like, the choir would like for you to join us on the second time through the call to worship this morning. Good morning. Please join me in the opening sentences that are printed in your bulletin. You have heard what was written about Jesus in Scripture, how he would suffer and die and then rise from the dead on the third day, how the same power that raised Jesus from the dead raised him to heaven and seated him at the right hand of God, where he now lives to intercede on our behalf. So let us come before God with confidence through the loving intercession of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Our God reigns, robed with majesty and armed with strength. God holds our world and our lives securely. This is the God to whom we have given our lives, the God who deserves our worship and our praise. Our hymn is number 144, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness that we might receive mercy and grace in our time of need. Would you join me please in our prayer of confession as we come to God. Let us pray. O God of promise and fulfillment, you command us to pray for the coming of your Spirit, and yet we confess a reluctance to watch and wait. O God of power and might, you invite us to pray for the coming of your kingdom, and yet we acknowledge an unwillingness to witness and work. O God of cross and crown, wind and fire, you reveal ourselves to us in ordinary and extravagant ways, and yet at times we have not perceived your presence, heard your voice, received your blessing, or shared your love with others. Forgive us in the name of the one who is seated at your right hand, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. These words we hear from Scripture, if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Believe the good news. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is found in the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us sing God's praises for His mercy in our lives. Ministry offering, Feed Our Hungry Children. This is the last one for this school year. Because of some generous grants and the generosity of congregations in the community, um, some of these backpacks will be distributed throughout the summer for children who um, do not have enough to eat. So thank you for your generosity, and we'll take it up at this time. invite the children to join me on the steps for the children's sermon. I'm 
I'm going to come sit over here next to y'all so you can see my pictures. Oh, here comes Bella Peach. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I brought some pictures to show you today of some kings. And this is a picture of King Tut. And he was just a little boy when he became king. And he was king of Egypt many, many, many years ago, thousands of years ago. And then he died. And here's a picture that somebody drew of King David. And he was one of the kings of Israel. And he was just a boy when he became king. And he ruled for a long time. And God loved him very much. But then he died. Now here's a picture of somebody named Augustus. King Augustus. And he was king when Jesus was born. And he was very powerful, but guess what happened? He died. Here's King Herod, and he was king when Jesus was born. And he's the one that wanted to kill the baby Jesus, and the wise men didn't go back to tell him. But then he died. And then here's a picture of somebody named King George III. And he was the king of England back when we fought the Revolutionary War here in the United States. And then King George died. And here's somebody named Lord Cornwallis. And he was a British officer. There's a Cornwallis Road here in Wallace named for him. And he was a very powerful man. But then he died. And then here's a man named Lord Mountbatten. And he was very powerful. And he was a, a soldier. But then he died. All these people died. But then look at this last picture. Here's a picture of Jesus. And underneath it says, Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. So all these other kings died, and they were very powerful, but then they died. But Jesus is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, and we know that he is alive still today, and he is still our King and our Lord. Let's have a prayer together. Dear God, thank you that Jesus is alive, that he is King of kings and Lord of lords of everything and of our hearts, too. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming out.
This morning I invite you to sing the prayer for illumination with me. Open the eyes of my heart. Let us pray together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Testament lesson is Psalm 47. This psalm is a hymn written for the director of music, Carla, and it is meant to stir people up to praise God publicly, cheerfully, and intelligently. I'm reading from the New International Version. Clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome the great king over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a song of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Our next hymn, We Bow Down, is printed in the bulletin. be seated. As we hear God's word from the New Testament today, keep in mind that Luke wrote the gospel that has his name, Luke, and he also wrote the book of Acts, sort of volume one, volume two. Volume one is the story of Jesus. Volume two he says, is the story of things that happened after Jesus ascended into heaven. 
so the story of the church. I begin with the closing verses of Luke's gospel and the beginning verses of Acts. So listen for the word of God. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath, day, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus as well as his brothers. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sometimes people ask me if I have any hobbies, and I tell them I like to ride my bike, I like to read, I like to work crossword puzzles, and oh, I collect dog cartoons. And that last one usually requires some explanation. For the past 33 years, except for a brief period of about three weeks, Nancy and I have had dogs in our house, in our family. And I've been collecting dog cartoons since 1987. Volume 1 covers 1987 through July 4, 2010, and I've started Volume 2. A cartoon from December 23, 1990, shows a man holding a box of dog biscuits. His dog is sitting there patiently with a biscuit balanced on his nose. And the man is saying, now balance it until I say, don't move, easy, easy, don't move, easy, easy. And the caption balloon above the dog's head says, this is it, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> well, Nancy and I play the same kind of game with our two dachshunds, Holden and Heidi. They get excited when we go to the pantry and rattle the treat box or the bag. We tell them to sit, and then we put two treats on the floor and we say, stay, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, okay, and they 
I really don't know what, I don't want to know what they're thinking as they're waiting for it. But their body language says it all. It's like they're quivering as they're sitting and they're waiting and they're kind of creeping forward, but they sit and they wait, but they're completely focused on that promised treat. They're completely focused. It's as if they can barely restrain themselves as they sit there and wait for it. And they are so excited. Well, it may be a strange analogy, but I thought about us telling Heidi and Holden to wait for it when I read Luke's two stories about what Jesus told His disciples to do after He ascended into heaven. At the end of Luke's Gospel story, Jesus says to His disciples, See, I'm sending upon you what My Father promised, so stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. And at the beginning of Luke's story about the church in the book of Acts, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. To stay there and to wait for the promise of the Father. According to Luke, in both stories, the disciples were excited and they were focused on the promise that was before them. The last three verses of Luke's Gospel tell us while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven and they worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple blessing God. And over in the first chapter of Acts, we read this description of what the disciples did after Jesus was lifted up. It says that they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet about a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered the city, they went to the room where they were staying. And then Luke lists the apostles, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, Simon, and Judas. And he says all of them were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers. Matthew has the Great Commission, and we're familiar with those words. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. John has a story about Jesus eating breakfast on the beach with his disciples after the resurrection, and then pulling Peter aside and asking him three times, do you love me? And Jesus says to Peter, feed my lamb. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. In the Gospel of Luke, in the book of Acts, Luke has Jesus telling His disciples, you are witnesses, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And at the end of those three Gospels, and at the beginning of Acts, there's a certain sense of urgency to get on with it, to get on with the work of Jesus that He'd been doing before His death and His resurrection. And Jesus Himself gave, him, gave them their marching orders before He was taken up into glory, into the heavens. And yet, there's also a sense of waiting. Waiting on God's timing. Waiting on the power of the Holy Spirit. Waiting and praying before the disciples get busy doing what Jesus had called them to do. So I think Luke's story in Acts 1 has a, a funny kind of balance between doing nothing on the one hand and resisting the temptation to do too much too soon on the other hand. I've always liked that scene where the disciples are gazing up into heaven as Jesus is being taken up and disappears into the cloud. One person described the disciples as kind of looking like Gomer Pyle and saying, Shazam! Golly! And just standing there. But then there are these two men with white robes. They must be angels. And they say to them, you know, imagine and keep thinking about those disciples. And the angels saying, Psst, Hey, men of Galilee, why do you keep looking up to heaven? Jesus, He's going to come back the way He went up. Don't look up there anymore. At the age of 24, Sam Jones walked down the aisle of a little church where his grandfather was preaching. 
His grandfather was named Sam Jones. Sam Jones committed his life to Christ. He had been a heavy drinker. And when his father, also named Sam Jones, was dying, he promised his father that he would quit drinking. And when he walked down the aisle and accepted Christ that day in his grandfather's church, he immediately felt a call to ministry. And a week later, he preached his first sermon. Sam Jones became a well-known evangelist in the South during the late 1800s. And one of his nicknames was Sam Golden Rule Jones. He would often hold what he called quitting meetings. And these were follow-up meetings for people who had been converted at his revivals. People would come to the quitting meeting, confess their sins, whatever they might be, cussing or drinking or gambling, and then take a vow to quit, to quit their sinning. A quitting meeting. It's reported that at one of the meetings, a lady was asked what she was going to quit. And she said she'd not been doing anything and she was going to quit doing that. (laughs) Well, the two men in white robes seemed to be telling the disciples who were standing there looking up into heaven to quit not doing anything. The angel seemed to be saying, don't just stand there, do something. But there's the rub. It must have been tempting to the disciples to take matters into their own hands Let's get started right now. Pumped up by their meetings with Jesus who is alive again, praise God, and full of the promise of power to come upon them from on high, they must have been just chomping at the bit to get going. And they sort of hint at that, don't you think, when they ask Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, come on, Jesus, let's get on with it. Let's... Tell us what to do and we'll get started. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He tells them what to do. But it's not exactly the way they expected. He tells His disciples to wait for it. To pray for it. I think it was probably hard for them to do. I think it's hard for us in the church to do still today We don't want to get caught slack-jawed standing around staring up into heaven. And so we run the risk of diving in head first before we take the time to wait and to pray and to find God's time. In a little less than three weeks, the 221st General Assembly of our Presbyterian Church USA will convene in Detroit, Michigan. And minister and elder commissioners from 173 presbyteries will gather from across the United States, as well as young adult advisory delegates and visitors from around the world and observers, all of whom will spend a week together doing the business of Christ's church on our behalf. Two years ago, I found out how exhilarating and exhausting the General Assembly week can be. Commissioners are asked to consider, to debate, to vote on many, many, many many recommendations and overtures from different presbyteries and committees. But in the midst of all that busyness two years ago, one of the highlights for me was when we were asked to turn around in our chairs and face the people behind us, which would form small groups of eight, and to pray together before we started discussing an issue, before a vote was taken, before we started the business for the day. This year's General Assembly meeting sounds like it will be a little bit different. And it's partly because of evaluations and feedbacks which we commissioners from two years ago gave about how to do the business of the General Assembly. This year, as the ministers and elders meet in committee meetings, they will be given worship resources that they can use to blend worship and prayer with their committee discussions, not just at the beginning, but throughout their committee work. And then, as all 
the commissioners gather again on Thursday morning for the beginning of the plenary session to hear the committee reports and to vote. The agenda is going to include 90 minutes for prayer and discernment before the debates begin about what could be difficult topics for the General Assembly. And the point is that this period of prayer and discernment will keep the commissioners from feeling as if they have to move immediately to a vote as soon as the gavel is hammered. The one spokeswoman said, as commissioners, we often go thinking our minds are made up, but it's in the context of community and the community praying together, even if it's in silence, she says, that I think offers the Holy Spirit the opportunity to break through. Two years ago, we accepted the recommendation of a committee from 2010 that prayer and Bible study and reflection be included each time we gather in community. And as the spokeswoman says, for three weeks from now, the opportunity to stop, to look, to listen is really helpful. Waiting and praying is not doing nothing. Someone has called this time between Jesus' ascension into heaven and His coming again a significant pause. That doesn't mean that the church sits around and does nothing in the time being. The significant pause is a time to wait and to pray, a time to act. It's also been called a gracious interim for witness. God calls us to do more than stand around looking up into heaven. But God also cautions us against running so fast that we get out in front of God's grace for our church and our lives. God has a job for us to do as His church. And God gives us the power of His Holy Spirit to do the job. I think that is one of the most exciting and assuring things about these Let's face it, strange stories about Jesus ascending into heaven. We don't have much experience with people rising up into the air and disappearing into heaven. But we say it every week in the Apostles' Creed. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. That's why we sang our second hymn today. We bow down for the second week in a row. The ascension of Jesus Christ tells us that He is Lord of creation and Lord of my life. Lord of the heavens before there was time. Lord of all lords you will be. This is the Lord who says, go and make disciples. Feed my sheep. Wait and pray. Your elders and I have made a commitment to take care of the business of this congregation in the midst of a worship service at our monthly session meetings. They are worship services. We light the Christ candle. We sing a song of praise and thanksgiving. We hear a devotion from an elder. We study God's Word and we talk about God's Word for quite a bit of time. We affirm our faith with a creed. We confess our sins and we hear the good news and we pray. Not just at the beginning and at the end, but we pray. As the meeting begins, we pray throughout the meeting, we pray at the end of the meeting, we pray that God will guide us through the meeting, we pray for direction during our meeting, we pray that God will bless us in what we've done, in what is pleasing to Him and that He will forgive us for ways in which we have not discerned and followed His will for our lives and for His church. Wait for it and pray for it. It doesn't mean we sit around and do nothing as the church of Jesus Christ. It does mean we trust in God's Holy Spirit to guide and direct us as we try to follow and serve our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, 
To Him be all the glory and honor and power forever and ever. Let us pray. Lord of all lords, King of all kings, You ascended on high and gave gifts to Your church. Give us faith to trust the promise of Your presence no matter where we are, no matter what may be happening in our lives. Give us hope and peace in knowing that You rule all things for the benefit of Your people. We ask this in Your name, for You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As we pray today, let us remember Nell Sloan. Nell's brother David died in South Carolina on Tuesday, and Nell's been there all week. Um, also, been asked to pray for the family of Elaine Apple, who died, and her services today at 1 p.m. Also, let us pray for Joe Dormagan. Joe is Verley Wells' son in law. Uh, Joyce Ainge's brother-in-law, Jackie's husband. Uh, earlier this week, he had a severe heart attack and cardiac arrest. He's in the hospital in Chicago. The update earlier this week, I have not gotten a recent update, was they were weaning him off of a, a machine that was helping his heart to work some. So let us remember them. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank You that You sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior and that He now reigns with You as Lord of Lords, King of Kings, of all creation, of all people, but also of our hearts. Lord, help us to wait on Your timing, not to be lazy, not to be uninterested, not to be scared, but to wait for the power that You have promised us, to claim the power that raised Your Son from the dead and which He now has in heaven that He makes available to us through Your Holy Spirit to be the church as You have called us to be. Lord, on this holiday weekend, we take time to remember the men and women who have served, and especially those who gave their lives that we might be here this morning free to worship You as we have chosen today. We thank You that we could get up in a beautiful place, drive here free from threat and harm, to express our faith and to be together with believers. Lord, as we enjoy this beautiful weekend, help us to remember families who grieve because their soldiers have died. And help us to live as good citizens of this country, but also of your kingdom, that we might honor their sacrifice. Lord, we pray for Nell and for Faison and for their family. We lift them up in this very hard time on David's death. We ask your blessings upon them and the hope of the resurrection. We pray for Elaine Apple's family as they gather to worship you today upon her death. We ask for your healing comfort to be in their lives. Lord, we lift up Joe and Jackie, Dormagan, Verley, Joyce and Gary, and all of their family. We pray for Joe. We pray that He'll be strong, that his heart will heal, and that he will be healthy. Lord, we thank you for calling us to faith in Jesus Christ. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to be the people you call us to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Very pleased and excited to ask George Francis to come forward and Elder Rick Batchelor, who will represent the session. George met with the session on Tuesday night and expressed his desire to unite with his congregation, and it was unanimous. <laughs> Just wanted to be sure you knew that. Okay. Uh, George and his wife, Mary, have uh, moved down here to River Landing. George teaches math at James Keenan High School and probably be busy the next two or three weeks, I would think. And um, just really glad to have you. We welcome you, uh, welcome the gifts that you've already shared with us, and hope that your faith will grow as ours will as we work together in Jesus Christ. Welcome. If you haven't met George yet, I, I hope that you will. Take time to introduce yourselves. Welcome him. He wants to be involved in this church, so get him involved. Thank you, George. Let's continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings.
Let's pray. Gracious God, you have given us time and the seasons. You've given us families and friends. You've given us our family of the church. Thank you, God, for providing us with this place of belonging. In grateful response, we bring our gifts to use in your church. Lord, accept our offering of love, accept our gifts and our lives, that the world and all people may praise your name. Out of gratitude we give, for you have given us so much in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I do know it's Memorial Day and not Christmas. Our closing hymn is Joy to the World, because it says, Joy to the world, the Savior reigns, let us our songs employ. Number 40, Joy to the World. you go from here into the coming week, may God open your mind to his presence so that you may truly come to know him. May God open the eyes of your heart so that you can experience the hope he offers to all who follow him. And may you come to understand the full extent of God's power at work in your life, the very same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of God Almighty. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Amen.